Section 4.2, we're going to talk about angle relationships today. So we're talking about triangles, continuing on with triangles, and now we're going to talk about some of the special angle relationships of triangles. All right, so section 4.2, angle relationships. Um, a couple of these we talked about yesterday. Uh, for instance, we talked about this first one yesterday. According to the triangle sum theorem, the sum of the angle measures of a triangle is 180. We all remember that from other schools, like or middle school or something like that? Yeah, so if I were to add up all of the angles in a triangle, they would always come out to be 180. That is true for any triangle. Okay, so anytime I'm missing a tri or an angle, I can add up the other two, subtract from 180, and find the third angle. Um, a special one here, this is also another shortcut here. If I have a right triangle, well, how many degrees does that right angle mean? 90. 90. So if that's 90 degrees, what are my other two angles going to add up to? 90. So what that's saying here is the shortcut is if I have a right triangle and I'm missing an angle, I can just subtract from 90, making it easier. Okay, it just kind of makes it a shorter problem that I can work with. I do not have to add and then subtract from 180, which I could. It would still give me the same answer. But the shortcut here says I can just subtract from 90, and I get the same answer. Okay, so number one here. I have X, 70, and 50. First off, inside of a triangle adds up to what, Spencer? What's the inside of a triangle add up to? 180. So, Spencer, if I want to find X here, what would I add up and subtract from 180? Yeah, I take 70 plus 50, which is 120. So I'd say 180 minus 120, and X comes out to be what, Anderson? Huh? 60 degrees. Nice job. Oh, there you go. Kind of spaced out there for a little bit. Two. Same thing here. I need to find X. What's the interior of a triangle add up to, Brock? So what am I going to add here? So I get 150, right? So 180. Minus 150, and what do I get there, Brock? 30 degrees. Okay. Three. Um, Quinn, what's the interior of a triangle add up to? 180. So 57 plus 33 gives me what, Quinn? 90. So what's X going to be, Quinn? 90. Yep. 180 minus 90 gets me 90 degrees. Tie number four. What's the interior of a triangle add up to? 180. 180. So tie, what am I going to do here? There's no angles. Ooh, I don't just want to make them up. What do I do, Chris? Yeah, don't I just, it, we said the angles add up to 180, right? So that's like saying X plus X plus X equals 180, which is not, nothing more than 3X equals 180. Or as Chris says, well, I can just divide it by 3. 180 divided by 3 gets me 60. Would that make sense? All the angles are 60 degrees? Oh, yeah. yeah, what type of triangle is that called? Equilateral. It is equilateral, but it's also equiangular. Equiangular means all the angles are the same. So, yeah, that's an equiangular triangle. Take a couple seconds to try these two on your own. Try and find the missing angles. There's a couple ways to do number 6. Um, so, yeah, try these two on your own. So number five is kind of the easier of the two up here. Why is number five the easier two? Well, they give me the triangle with two angles, right? So add up the two angles, subtract from 180. Audrey, what do I get? 47 degrees, yeah. Okay, now number six comes, and it says it wants me to get this angle right here, um, angle CAD. Well, a lot of you are looking, you're looking at this triangle right here probably, right? Yeah. And a lot of you are like, mm, they only give me one angle. So that's a problem. But... We have to remember all the properties here. How many degrees is this straight line down here? Okay, so that straight line is 180 degrees, and this angle is 84. What's the angle on the other side going to be? Yeah, that angle is going to be 96 degrees. Why? Because it has to be a straight line. So 180 minus 84 gets me that 80, 96. Now do I have two angles that I can find the third angle in the triangle? Yeah, now I have those two angles. The third angle is what, Tyler? 38 degrees. Okay. Didn't be able to do it a different way. There's one other way you could do it. Didn't be able to do it a different way. How do you find the 38? What? How do I find the 38? Yeah. Um, I added up 46 and 96. So I did 180 minus 46 minus 96. Yep. All right, next part here. What happens if I have a problem like this? So if you look at number seven. 
I have x, 2x, and 66. Well, I have a setup to solve these here. Remember, Tyler, what's the inside of a triangle add up to? 180. So what would all of these angles add up to? So I'm just going to set up an equation and solve. x plus 2x plus 66 equals 180. 180. So x plus 2x is? 3x. So I get 3x plus 66 equals 180. Subtract 66. 3x equals 114. I end up with x equals to what, 38? So I have 38. Now I take that 38 and I plug it into my angles up there. I have 38 degrees and the other one is 76 degrees. Again, the big thing there is to recognize, what's the triangle up to? 180. Number 8 here. Um, how would I set up number 8, Caden? So, Caden, how would I set up number 8 here to solve this? Yep, so x plus 5 plus plus equals, nice job. And now I work out the algebra problem here. So x plus 2x gets me 3x. 5 plus 85 is 90. Minus 21 gets me 69 equals 180. So I have 3x plus 69 equals 180. Subtract 69 to both sides. You get 3x equals 111. Or x comes out to equal 37. 37. Now I take that 37 and I plug it in. Gives me angles of 42. And the other one is, is it 53? I do want you to plug them back in to get the answers. Yep. I want you to plug them back in and get the angle measures. Yep. All right. So using that same idea. Try numbers 9 and 10 on your own. Now, number 9 says just to find the value of x. 10 says to plug it back in. So this is a two-step problem. Does that make sense, Brock? So 9, solve x. 10, plug it back in. All right? So yeah, take a couple seconds. Try this one on your own. All right, so number 9 here. Callie, set it up for me. How would you set it up? Shh, gentlemen. 7x minus 13 plus 2x plus 2 plus 4x plus 9 equals 180. I got them all. When you add it to... Okay, when you work it out, then you get x equals what then, Callie? 14. X equals 14. You plug them all back in. Callie, what are you getting? You plug them back in. I only have two. I okay, got 30 and 85. So S is 30. Oh, they, they're labeled? Oh, that helps. R was 85. T is 77. T is 65. And T is 65 degrees. What did I do wrong? Nice job. Check yourself you Right? 30, 85, 65. Becca, is that what you got? Nice job. Good work. Next part here. Listen up, gentlemen. Um, first off, number 11 here. Uh, Rennie, what type of triangle do I have here? Number 11. That's a right triangle. So if it's a right triangle, it means I have a right angle. Which, what's a right angle? 90. So what's the shortcut say I can do to find angle L? I can do 90 minus what? I can do 90 minus 41. Okay, so instead I don't have to add those two other angles. I can just subtract from 90. 90 minus 41 gets me 49 degrees. I could do that, but because this one's 90 degrees, that means the other two angles have to add up to 90 degrees. So it just makes it easier. This is the right triangle. It's one of those special things. 12. Same idea here. I have a right triangle. Tyler, what type of angle is that then? That's how many degrees? 90. 90. So if the angle there is 50.2, what's angle C going to be? 39.8. Yep, 90 minus 50.2 gives me 39.8 degrees. Nice job. Gentlemen? All right, last thing we're talking about today, or partially, is the exterior angles theorem. Okay? Exterior angle. An exterior angle means it's the line that is extended from a triangle. So it is a line extended from a triangle. All right, so exterior angle again. is the angle that's extended from a triangle. Okay, so that's the exterior angle. It's on the outside of the triangle. So the exterior angle is on the outside. Here's what the exterior angle means. Okay, 
Now, we all know a line is how many degrees? A line is how many? 180. What's a triangle going to be? Okay. So what that's saying here is if I remove angle 3 from both of those, that means angle 1 plus angle 2 is the same thing as angle 4, basically. Okay, it's kind of a shortcut there. So, angles here. Shortcut says the outside angle is the same thing as the two inside angles. Another way you can work it out, just kind of a longer process, is can you add all the angles, subtract from 180, then find it? Yeah, just kind of a longer process. Okay, here's the shortcut right here. And then the last one, third angle's theorem. What do these tick marks mean right here? They're congruent. So angle 2 is congruent to angle 5, angle 3 is congruent to angle 6. If those are all congruent, where do you suppose angles 1 and 4 are going to be? Yeah, if two of the angles are the same, the third angles are going to be the same. Let's count what that means. So let's look at number 13 here. It says I want to find angle G here. Now if angle JHF is 111 degrees, how's the shortcut that I can find angle G here? Read. I could do that. So yeah, this line is 180, so I could find that angle there, then do it right. Katie, what's another way I could do it? 111 minus 60. Yeah, I can do a 111 minus 60. And what's angle G going to be? 51 degrees? Yeah, I could do that because it's 51 degrees, because that's what that theorem on the last page said, is that the outside angle is going to be the same as the two inside angles. However, if I didn't want to do that, as Reed said, I could find the inside angle right here. Well, that angle comes out to be 69 degrees, right? And then I could take 69 and 60 and get 129 and subtract that from 180, and I would still get 51 degrees. That's just a little bit longer of a process. Okay. Same thing here on 14. If the outside angle is 68, what can I do with these two inside angles right here, Claire? Add them and set them equal to? Yep. So 3x plus 4x plus 5 equals 68 degrees. So add those, set equals 68. That gives me 7x plus 5 equals 68. Subtract 5, 7x equals 63. End up with x equals 9. Take that, I plug that back in, it wants me to find angle D. So I plug it back in up there to find angle D. 9 times 4 is 36 plus 5, I get an angle of... 41 degrees. Okay, so there's ways I can find those angles. Last thing we're talking about today is this third angles theorem. Um, Brock, what do these angles mean right here? What do those angle measures mean? What do those little tick marks there mean? They're congruent. What about K and N? So if those two angles are both congruent, what do you suppose M and Q are going to be? So how would I solve that, Brock? If they're congruent, so equals, yep, equals 7x minus 2. So 6x plus 10 equals 7x minus 2. When I work that out, I end up with x equals what, Blake? Um, give me a second here. Yeah, it's 12. Yep, you get x equals 12. And then once you find measure of amber, or angles m and q, so I plug that in, 12 times 6 is 72, plus 10 gets me 82. Plug it into the other one, 7 times 12 is 84, minus 2 is still 82 degrees. They're both going to be 82. Last one, number 16. Um, Becca, where's my angles U up here? What do those two tick marks mean? Okay. Now down here, S is a what type of angle here, Becca? So what's the one right next to it going to be? Yeah, that's going to be 90 as well, so are those the same angles? So now, what do you know about T and R? They're the same, so I'd say 3x equals 2x plus 11. When I work that out, what do you get x equal, Becca? Huh? 11. Then it wants me to find it, so I take that and I plug it in. Both my angles are going to be how many degrees, Anderson? Uh, I just that again. Take 11, plug it in, what's 3 times 11? And what's 2 times 11 plus 11? 32, 33. 33 degrees, which makes sense, right? They should be the same. 
So there's that. And there's your assignment.